Now let's talk about it. <clears throat> VRFs in detail. So we have a pretty small topology here. We are considering only a topology till here, from here to here. What are these? I will let you know later, right? But first thing first, we have a router one here. This router, plain router, no VRFs, nothing, right? Only one hardware. I have defined a loopback address here, which is 1.1.1.0 slash 24. And then the router name is R1. This interface name is FA0 slash 1. And I am running an IP address on this interface, which is dot 1. What is the meaning of dot 1? The meaning is 192.168.12.1 because this is the subnet running on this interface. Why 12? Because it is between 1 and router 2. This is basically my FA0 slash 1 interface of router 2. I'm not talking much about our router 2 to begin with. Right, and here we have router R3, this one, and I have created a loop back here 2.2.2.0 slash 24 FA0 slash 0 is actually the interface which is connecting to it, and this address is going to be dot 3 192.168.23.3. Why 23? Because it is between 2 and 3. Pretty much clear, right? And on R1, I am running OSPF, right. How to run OSPF, you know, right? And I'm advertising this interface into OSPF. And this interface is the one where I'm creating the neighborship, right? The configuration is just simple. You all know about it, you how to do that, right? <coughs> On R3, I am running another routing protocol, which is BGP, right? I'm giving a neighbor command here and the uh, and the autonomous system number first thing first is going to be 300 Y because this is router 3 and I have chosen the ASP and that for that. The neighbor is going to be R2 with this IP address whatever I am going to configure here which is going to be 2.2 .2, right and then I'm advertising this loop back which is 2.2.2.0 slash 24 into BGP using the network statement. It is as simple as that. Right? We can do that. We have spent around 15 hours learning OSPF and uh, around 20 hours learning BGP. So we can do this with ease, no problems. But now let's discuss what is happening at R2. R2 is a single router here, guys. And I have created two vrf on this router we have vrf number a this one which is your green vrf so if i say green vrf guys or vrf a both are same thing right so i have created a vrf a and i am representing it with a green virtual router which is this one and i have also created another router which is the orange router which is right here right and this is my vrf number b and of course i'm going to have this router which is a physical router with its global routing table right and what i'm doing now is i am assigning the fa0 slash one interface of r2 in VRF A, right? How to do that? What I'm going to do is I will go into R2's FA0 slash 0 interface and I will write IP forwarding VRF VRF A. This means that FA0 slash 0 interface is going to forward packets for VRF A. It is as simple as that. Similarly, what I'll do is I will go into the FA0 slash 2 interface of this router and I will write IP forwarding VRFB, which means that this interface is now the part of VRFB and it is going to forward packets for VRFB. It is as simple as that. Right? Now, what is going to happen is if I want to learn an OSPF route from one uh, from router one, which is 1.1.1.0, 1 
it means I need to run OSPF into this VRF, which is VRFA. But it is, is it going to be different than the normal OSPF? Absolutely not. But yes, configuration wise, we need to explain Mr. R1 that Mr. R1, you have one virtual router, which is the green router here, which is the VRFA, right? I want to run OSPF into this virtual router. I am not running OSPF in default router which is the blue router or global routing table so basically if you do if you run this command like this that router ospf1 if you write only this thing guys ospf will run into the global routing table because you haven't mentioned that you want to run it for a vrf right so if you run, if you if you do, if you write only this command, the router will understand that it is for the global routing table. But yes, if you write after that PRFA, you are actually saying that router, please run this OSPF process number one in VRFA. It should be in VRFA, right? It is not the part of global routing table, guys. It is as simple as that. You just need to say where you are going to run OSPF. If you do not specify these two words after router OSPF 1, it will be running in the global routing table. Otherwise, if you say that it should run for the green router, which is VRFA, it will be running in this VRF, the OSPF, right? interesting and after that the commands are going to be simple basically you can define the router id your network is going to be 192.168.12.0 on which you are running this routing protocol if you run that then your ospf neighborship is going to come up with r1 it is as simple as that and if it is that then the lsas are going to be flow from here to here and you will be seeing this beautiful routing table which is of vrfa and here you will find two routes. <clears throat> what are these routes? Number one, 192.168.12.0, which is the directly connected interface. And it is written here. It's a directly connected interface, FA0 slash 1. By the way, guys, this is the routing table of VRFA, the green routing table. It is not the global routing table. There is nothing in global routing table. Why? Because there is no interface in the global routing table till now, right? Whatever the interfaces were, we have assigned them into VRFA and VRFP. It is as simple as that. So there is nothing, absolutely nothing in the global routing table, right? Whatever we are seeing here, this is actually for the VRFA where I have seen that this route has come, which is 192.168.12.0 which is directly connected. The second route, which is part of this uh, VRF is the OSPF learned route, which is 1.1.1.0 slash 24 via R1. It is as simple as that, right? Interesting. So let's talk about VRFB where we have to run BGP now into this orange router or VRFB, right? Interesting. If we run BGP in VRFB, then there is a slightly change in the configuration and the commands. But you can run BGP specific over this VRF2. How to do that, I will be letting you know in the next board, but yes, just like you see that, uh, uh, just like you see in case of OSPF, there is a little bit change in the configuration command, right? If you want to run PGP for a specific VRF, and now we are exactly doing that. We are not running BGP for the blue router or the global routing table. We are running BGP for the orange router, which is a VRF, right? 
And if I can run that, I will be running that BGP and then inside that BGP, I will be giving the neighbor command and here the BGP, uh, the running uh, with the AS number 200 and R3, the BGP is running with AS number 300, right? And if that is the case, then basically you are giving the neighbor command, neighbor is going to be R3 and the remote AS is going to be your 300. Once you do that, your BGP neighborship is also coming, will come up and running. It is as simple as that. Once you do that, I will be seeing the VRF of B, which will showcase you 192.168.23.0, which is this network is directly connected over FA0 slash 2 interface. And at last, you will be seeing this BGP route 2, that BGP route 2.2.2.0, which is the loopback interface on R3, is learned via R3. It is as simple as that, guys, right? But how to see these VRF or the routing table of VRF A or VRF B if you do show IP route? It will going to showcase you the global routing table, right? And there is nothing, absolutely nothing in this global routing table because you are not running anything in global routing table. But what if you want to see the routing table of VRFA? You just need to say show IP route. And you need to tell that show all the IP route for VRFA. It is as simple as that. If you do that, you are going to get this output. Okay. Similarly, if you want to see the output of VRFB, you need to do show IP route VRFB. It is as simple as that. Interesting. So right now I am whatever the commands I am writing is for Cisco, right? But yes, if you can get the concept well of the VRF, everybody is implemented this way. This command could be changed, but the concept is going to be same. It is as simple as that, right? But what is the point, guys? Why I am creating all those things? Why R2 is having these two different virtual routing, uh, virtual routing and forwarding? Because I want to create this network. That is it. But now there is a question for you, right? Anybody can take, anybody can raise hand. Can if I issue a ping on router 3 and the ping is ping 1.1.1.1, right, from the source IP address of 2.2.2.2, .2 I am just giving this command here on router R3. Can you guys tell me that whether this ping should work? or ping is going to work or not, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand if this ping works. How many of you, you say that this ping is going to work? Ping 1.1 uh, from source address this on router R3. Okay, I do not see any hand raised. So it means that, okay, I change the question. How many of you say that this ping is, ping is not going to work? Okay, at least tell me, am I audible? Okay, Satish ji and everybody, almost three guys are saying here that the ping is not going to work. What about you, Burak? Whether this ping works or not? Okay, so I could see a hand raise from almost everybody that this ping is not going to work. That is okay. This is good. Actually, this ping is not going to work. Right? And here is the reason. So let me... Let me clean this board, right? Let me showcase you why the ping is not work and how we can make this ping work. We will discuss that too. Okay. So basically what is happening here is as soon as I write, uh, I want to create, I want to send this ping packet, which is of the green color. 
and the source of this packet is going to be 2.2.2.2 this is the source and the destination IP address is going to be 1.1.1.1 this is the destination when you write a ping R3 is going to generate this packet R3 will see into its routing table right that whether it is a route for 2.2.2.2 or not sorry route for 1.1.1.1 or not so definitely it is going to check its routing table and it is not going to find that route why because it is not getting any route with respect to 1.1.1.1 from R3 it is as simple as that and if that is the case the R3 is going to drop this packet because it doesn't have the route for this destination it is as simple as that right no route for the destination and if we do not have the route for the destination of course we need to drop the packet so let's think in terms of that why uh, uh, this there, there was uh, there, uh, why the ping was not successful because we do not have the route and there is another reason right if you consider this complete network this complete network is not one network this is actually two networks why because right now this blue router is not into the picture at all right r1 is pairing with all although it is pairing with r2 but it is pairing the virtual instance of r2 which is the green router and that, that is why i have created this network here this is my network number one and this is my network number two right with the orange and r3 these two are totally separate network and that is why they are not communicating if you want to make them communicate put a router between them right then basically connect these two network then packet can flow from here to here otherwise not right so basically this is the advantage of having vrf and that is the first thing why you wanted to divide this network because you wanted to create separate network this is vrf a this is vrf b this is vrf c right there is a totally different network of vrf a there is totally net different network of vrf b totally different network of vrf c right if you want to have a communication between a and b then why at the first place you are dividing them into different routers but that doesn't mean that basically there is not a requirement in the future that b something in b wants to communicate to something in a and that is why basically you need to communicate uh, basically there, there could be requirement right but you all you should understand that if there is a heavy requirement that a should communicate to b then these, these should be part of the same router or same router network it is as simple as that right but you divide the, your network in, in vrfs and later time on you come to know that yes there are some things which need to communicate between vrfs too then we have to think a lot right how to make them communicate but to me this is not one network guys this is actually two networks it is as simple as that right so now before moving forward we are i am already talking from last 40 minutes if you guys have any doubt any question then please ask otherwise i would like to let you know how to make these two guys communicate with each other what is the problem if you have any doubt any question about this picture or the previous please do